Hi everybody, I'm John Lincoln, CEO of Ignite Visibility, a digital marketing teacher at UC San Diego, a writer for Entrepreneur Magazine, Inc. Magazine, Search Engine Land, and Marketing Land. And welcome to the Ignite Visibility Learning SEO video series. I'm gonna teach you everything that you need to know about SEO, and right now you're on the first video in a series of videos on our YouTube playlist. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a basic overview of search engine optimization, okay? It's not gonna be all of the most advanced stuff out there, that's gonna be in the later videos, so if you're a super advanced search engine optimization person, you're probably gonna to wanna to skip ahead, but if you're somebody who's just kinda of looking to learn what SEO is about, the basics, this is the perfect place for you, okay? So now I'm gonna teach you just a little bit about what SEO is, how it works, give you a basic overview, and that's how we're gonna kick things off. So first things first, SEO is getting ranked in Google, Yahoo, Bing, and all the major search engines. Also, actually, Amazon is a big place where people are doing search engine optimization now too, right? Any website that has a search engine, um, basically there's a benefit for doing SEO for that website. So a lot of people actually even look at Facebook. They look at Twitter, right, as search engines as well. And there's a lot of different ways that you can basically manipulate uh, the search results so that you can rank higher and you can get more traffic to your website. But in a nutshell, when most people say SEO, they're trying to get you ranked in Google Google because that's the biggest search engine in the world. Now, there's organic results and there's paid ads, right? So the paid ads are at the top of the search results. The organic results are right underneath that, right? So paying for ads does not make it so that your organic results rank higher, right? So make sure that you understand that there's a difference there. When it comes to paid ads inside of Google, there's two types of ads basically. There's AdWords and there's display ads. Um, the AdWords ads are the ones that are going to show up in the search results. Now when it comes to SEO, it's about 50% on-site optimization and about 50% off-site optimization. So what that means is it's about 50% what you do to your website and about 50% what you do off of your website, right? The signals around the internet that are pointing to your site and showing Google and the other search engines that this website's alive, that this website's credible, that people are interacting with this website. So in its most basic form, the two most powerful things are the content on your website and the links pointing at your website. Now when it comes to links, external hyperlinks, right? So an actual link inside of HTML pointing from one website to another website, generally the more links you have the better, but you need to also have high quality links. So there's a whole kind of industry around external linking, right? So a link from a site like Forbes is gonna be much more powerful than smaller sites, right? So you want to make sure that you get links from what we call high domain authority websites, right? And there's a lot of great tools out there that will let you kind of determine what are the most powerful. Some of those being Moz Open Site Explorer, another one being SEMrush, another one being Majestic SEO, another one being Arefs, right? So you can look at those tools, you can kind of see where, put your competitors in, see where they're getting links, and then you can get links on your own. I'll talk about that a little bit more in the next video. Now when it comes to on-site optimization, what you're doing to your actual website, you want to kind of start by thinking about it on the page level, okay? So there's the website as a whole, but there's also the individual page that you want to have ranked in Google, right? So when you look at an individual page, the main things you're looking at are the URL. Does it have a keyword in it? The title of the page and the meta description of the page, do those have keywords in it, right? Um, these are both things that are only in the HTML of the page, right? So they're not visible on the page. The H1 and the H2, so those are the headings on the page, right? H1 and H2 are the way that you style them in the HTML so that Google kind of understands what they are. You want to have keywords in there as well. The copy on the page, how much copy is on the page? Generally, the highest ranking pages inside of Google are 2,500 words of copy. I know that's a lot of copy. Now, not every single page is like that. Um, there's, there's ones that are shorter too, but a recent study came, in, came out showing that longer form content does rank higher. So you want it to be high quality content, you want it to be generally longer quality content, lots of facts, lots of figures, making sure that you're working your keywords in there, right? 
And then also, what do the images look like on the page? Does the image file name say the keyword? Does the image alt text say the keyword, right? Does the image caption say the keyword? And does it do that in a natural way? So that's describing the image, but it also references the main keyword on the page. Also, there's something called schema.org that you can put inside of the code of your website, and then that tells the search engines what the website's about. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. But as it's at its most kind of basic foundation, what you're looking for is high quality links to your site and a page that really relates specifically to the keyword. And if you can do that, you're gonna have a pretty darn good shot of ranking inside of Google. Now there's something else called website architecture, right? And what that means is the way that you basically format your website from a, from a technical perspective, right? So an example of that would be internal linking, right? So if this is a really important page on your site, if you link to that page a lot of times from other pages on your site, then all of those internal links to this page are gonna be a signal to Google that that's an important page on your site and you should rank it higher. Also, Google and the other search engines, they'll look at your navigation and take a look at that and they'll say, oh, okay, well, if this is one of the most important pages in the navigation, it must be one of the most important pages to rank on the website as well, right? So whatever you put into your navigation generally has more credibility, one, because it's high in the code, and two, because there's a lot of internal links going to it. Okay, so that's kind of website architecture at its most basic form. There's also a lot of other things that go into it, some of them being blocking certain pages on your site, redirecting certain pages of your site, um, stuff like that, which we'll get into in another uh, part of this series. Now, there's more stuff that goes into SEO, which is what makes it so complicated, but don't ever forget, the most important things are always content and links, right? As long as there's nothing broken on your site, and as long as Google can get to your site, then content and links are the most important, but there are other things that are important also, such as social signals. Are a lot of people sharing your content? Are a lot of people interacting with your content? I'll give you an example. If I write a great 2,500 word post, right, a blog post that's very well optimized, right, in this way, and I push it live, and a thousand people share it, that's gonna be a really strong signal to Google. And what's gonna happen is, is Google's gonna see that interaction, boom, and it's gonna shoot that post to the top of the rankings. So that can be a quick way to get um, something indexed and pushed to the top very, very easily, right? So social signals are important. Also, there's something called content marketing. So how often are you creating content? Is that content high quality content, right? And are you doing it on a continual basis? Keep in mind, anything can rank on your website. It can be your homepage, your service page, your individual location page. It can be your blog pages, right? Your forum pages. You always need to think of your website as a whole and be very deliberate about what you want to rank where which is why people often do a specific keyword assignment for an individual page on the site. So we know that these are the keywords assigned to this page. Um, also, there's a lot of technical things, such as is your website mobile ready? Is your website on HTTPS? If you're international and your site's in multiple countries, is your website optimized for that? There's things that you have to do for that. Do you have a good code base and what do your templates look like? For example, your homepage template, your category template, and your blog template. Those are all different templates. That's how websites are built. So this is just a basic intro to SEO, but what I want everybody to take away is at the end of the day, it really comes down to the quality of your content, right? And the amount of high quality links that you have to the website, assuming nothing else is broken, assuming that the site structure is in good shape, and a lot of that kind of can depend on what platform your website's built on, right? So like a, a easier site like WordPress or something generally has a good content management system, not too many errors. A bigger site can have a lot of errors, but this is just a basic intro to SEO. And what I'm gonna do now in all the following videos, I'll break these things down for you. I'll make them more simple. And I can't wait to see you in the next video.